so as we just set up our down, we've got um, Joe, as I said, preaching today on the presence of the Lord. Um, and first, Nina's going to share our, our reading for today, which is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, great to see you here this morning. And uh, yeah, very well welcome to you. If this is your first time uh, to church this morning. And as well mentioned, it'd be great to meet a few more of you for some tea and coffee after the service. My name is Joe, um, and I'm part of the team here at St. Peter's. Um, so yeah, it's amazing to be in the house of God this morning with you. And uh, yeah, thank you, Nina, for that reading. Let's pray before we start this morning. Yeah, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your presence here this morning. Thank you that you are good. We bless your name this morning. We bless your name. We say we're desperate for you. We're thirsty for more of you. We haven't just come this morning just to hear a nice word, to have our intellect um, challenged, but we want to be transformed by your word afresh this morning. We want to be transformed by who you are as we look at you in your face this morning. Your beauty, your majesty, your power, your authority. Lord, come and release all that you are this morning upon your people. Come and release your peace to those who need it. Come and release your strength this morning to those that feel weak. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just... We just let go this morning of, of anything that we're holding on to too tightly. If anything we're holding on to anything too tightly, Lord, this morning, we just let it go right now into your presence. We let it go right now. We, we uh, yes, Lord, I, I don't know why specifically, but we, I pray for anyone that's holding on to unforgiveness this morning. I pray that you would help us just to let it go into your presence, just to let it go right now in Jesus' name. Those of us that feel fear, we rebuke fear in this place. We rebuke fear in Jesus' name. Jesus, the most powerful, the Alpha, the Omega, the, the beginning and the end. It is you we worship. We fear not, for you are with us. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, my name is Joe, as I mentioned, and I'm married to Christina, um, who's an amazing lady. She's actually not here this morning. She's not feeling too well. So, babes, I love you. Um, so, uh, yes, and um, she's fantastic. We've been in London for coming up to two years now, um, which is amazing. And uh, we're in a series looking at the four pillars of a healthy church. The four pillars of a healthy church. As Will mentioned, we've had, um, let's see if we can remember what we've had. We've had <laughs> Preaching, very good. Prayer. Here's it. Here's it. <laughs> no, preaching, prayer, uh, presence, which I'm doing. <laughs> Practical. You know, you know, the, yeah. anyway, let me not go down that route. Um, yes, and I would suggest to us, I was looking at these, these titles as I was preparing, and these are not just, just things for a healthy church, I would suggest these are things for a healthy life, to be. Uh, people who, who listen to, to preaching and doers, and not just hearers, but doers of the word, people of prayer. And we're going to be looking at presence this morning. We're going to be looking at presence, uh, the presence of God. But looking, but looking at it through the lens of praise and worship. I love the psalm that we just read together. Psalm 100 is one of my favorites. And if you allow me to read it again, I'm going to read it in a different translation. 
just because I love the way that the Passion Translation puts it. And it says this, Lift up a great shout of joy to Yahweh. Go ahead and do it. Everyone, everywhere. Worship Yahweh with gladness. Sing your way into his presence with joy and realize what this really means. We have the privilege of worshiping Yahweh our God. For he is our creator and we belong to him. We are the people of his pleasure. You can pass through his open gates with the password of praise. I love that. You can pass through his open gates with the password of praise. Come right into his presence with thanksgiving. Come, bring your thank offering to him and affectionately bless his beautiful name. For Yahweh is good. For Yahweh is always good and ready to receive you. He's so loving that it will amaze you. So kind that it will astound you. And he is famous for his faithfulness towards you, towards all. Everyone knows our God can be trusted, for he keeps his promises to every generation. This psalm is an exhortation to praise, to lay everything aside that hinders us, and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. God doesn't care if we sing or squeak as long as we are opening our mouths and giving him praise with a cheerful and glad heart. What God is more concerned about what God is more concerned with is the attitude of our hearts when we come to him. He wants us to serve him with gladness, not out of manipulation or obligation. He wants voluntary lovers who choose him. God's not trying to twist your arm. He loves you. Not just your Sunday you, but you in all your mess. Not just affected you. The psalmist instructs us to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Worship can be perceived as many things. Tithes, offerings, for example, are an extension of our worship. We all have been created differently with different personalities and different preferences. Um, I was thinking about this in relation to worship, you know. Um, some of us are like, no, um, Joe, like, I do like worship, but I'm more like, I'm like, I like to just sit and reflect. Which is awesome, amazing, love that. Some of us might find the presence of God, uh, you know, like, oh no, Joe, like, I love like jazz worship. Like, I'm into like jazz worship, like saxophone and trumpet, like, that's more my thing. I'm into, I'm just into jazz. Yeah, I wonder if yeah, it probably is a thing, um, which is awesome. And maybe, maybe a few of us, uh, maybe a few of us are like, no, like, I'm into heavy metal worship. Like, that's my thing. Like, I'm just like heavy metal worship. Like, I'm there. Like, maybe some of you are like that. Um, that's not my personal preference, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, maybe some of us like, I like gospel music. That's what I love. That's where I meet with God. I love Kirk Franklin. I love Fred Hammond. Like, Fred and send down from glory. Tune. <laughs> anyway, I personally love gospel music. Um, I grew up with a lot of gospel music, got a lot of gospel praise, praise and worship music. I didn't have a choice growing up. Like, we just had worship music blaring out everywhere. Like, in the car on the way to school, in the house, we didn't have any choice, it's just loud. And then my mom was like, Mom, turn it down, it's too loud, what are you doing? She's like, Psst. I want to make Jamaica, do you know what I mean? She was like, Psst. just carry on, do you know what I mean? Just like, wrap on. <laughs> that's not even a joke, that's actually the truth, this is real. Um, but in all this, in all our preferences, so maybe some of us love the organ. I personally love the organ, I love the organ. And in all our preferences of what we personally love, I believe, as I was preparing this, I felt God say to me, whatever it is, do I have your yes? Do I 
God is your practices. Do I have your yes? Does, does, does God have your yes this morning? And, you know, it's, it's nice that we're in church and, you know, we're here and we're having a lovely time. And it's easy, I, you know, for me, I love church. It's easy for him to have his yes here, um, to, for him to have our yes here, because it's lovely, it's nice, you know, we can have worship, it's a nice preach, you know, we can kind of, uh, you know, I like to think of it as, as my church yes. It's like, yeah, Lord, you're awesome. You're amazing. Um, you know, you leave for church in the morning, you're in the car, you're walking to church with your wife, you're arguing about something, like, I don't know, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you haven't taken the bins out again, or, oh my gosh, you haven't, you haven't done that thing. Or maybe you've got children here this morning, and you're on the way to church, and it's like just chaos. You come in, you only just made it at 10.30, like, it's chaos, you can't find the kids' shoes, his socks are everywhere, like, it's just chaos. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And you get to church, and you're like, hey, you're like, hi, morning. Nice to see you. How you doing? Yeah, very good, thank you. How are you? You know, we've got a Sunday smile. It's easy for God to have a yes on a Sunday. But does he have your yes in that business deal? What about when it's easy to complain and gossip about others? Does he have your yes then? Does God have your yes when it's not so convenient? On a Tuesday, on a Thursday afternoon, when we can maybe make a little bit more money in that deal if we just twist the words like this and maybe just tell a few lies there. Oh, it's gone quiet. Ooh. But does he have your yes in that? Because that's what I believe God is calling us to. I believe he's calling us to have our hearts all of the time. Our hearts are made worship. John 4.23 says, But the hour has come when, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, and the Father seeks such to worship him. In the good and the bad, in the rough, in the smooth, in the valley and on the mountaintop, will you worship him? Life is hard, has many challenges, great loss, great pain. What are you worshiping then? When you feel deserted, when he doesn't feel close, when there's no band, there's no nice music. We you worship him in your room when that spirit of depression comes upon you and the spirit of anxiety tries to take over you. We you worship him then. When we come into the presence of God, we're reminding ourselves of who he is. We're reminding our souls, our spirits, our minds and our spirits are lifted. When we come into the presence of God and when we worship, our minds are, are renewed, our focus is fixed, and, and we are realigned to that which is true. We are realigned to that which is true. You are the image of who you behold and of who you spend the most time with. I just want to pause and say, I just, I want to be the type of person that spends time in God's presence, but I also understand the challenges of that. We're all so busy and we're all so important and we've got this, we're doing that, we're running, and we're do and we kind of fit God in like, yeah God, this is your section now, quick, bless me, I need this, 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 and make it quick, because I've got a lot going on right now. How easy it is to have that approach with God, everyone's like, no, we don't, <laughs> everyone's going to be looks like, no, we don't feel like that at all, we just to spend our lives in prayer and worship. <laughs> but it's easy to do that. Lord, we've got an hour and a half, make it quick. You know, let's just keep this service moving. Some of us might uh, 
be here this morning and, you know, it, you might be asking this quite a sad question, but what actually happens? You know, why is it that we're singing these songs with the lyrics and why is there so many repeats and, 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 and why do we have to? I, I don't like, you know, I'm, I'm not interested in worship. I just come for the word. You know, I just come for the bread. That's what I really come for. Some of us might be here thinking, why do we have to lift our hands in worship? That's not my personality. That's not me. There are many instances in scripture where there are physical responses of surrender. And there's, there's many more, I'll read a few. Psalm 63, 4, so I will bless you, Lord, as long as I live. In your name I will lift up holy hands. Psalm 1, 3, 4, lift up your hands to the holy place. Bless the Lord. Lamentations 3. Let us lift up our hearts and our hands to God in heaven. Psalm 141. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you and the lifting up of my hands. Hear the voice of my plea for mercy when I cry to you for help, when I lift my hands towards your most holy sanctuary. Physical acts are spiritual, can be spiritual representations. So, What's helpful for me is sometimes just to come to worship and for me just to have my hands like this. And, and what I'm saying here is I don't have all the answers. God, I, I, I need your wisdom. I need your strength. I'm, whatever I'm holding on to, I'm giving it to you this morning in worship. We're not just here having like a good vibe and like, oh, this is awesome. And as awesome as it is, like I love singing, I love music, I love to play. But there is a spiritual transaction happening when we come on a Sunday morning and we lift up our praises to worship. There's something happening deeper within the spirit. I read this. When you're under pressure, stress, and you don't know what to do, worship. Worship is not entertainment or a vibe. Worship is a weapon. A weapon against your flesh, against circumstances, and against the plans of the enemy. As you lift up songs of praise to God, He'll remind you of who, he, of who he is and what he can do. It will help you find peace in the midst of pressure. As you lift songs of praise to God, you remind yourself who he is and what he can do. And it will help you find peace in the midst of pressure. I need peace, man. I'm super messed up. I need to come into the presence of God and worship. I need his word. I need to be renewed through prayer because... I just need it because without him, I'm a problem. It's funny to have a problem with him, but anyway, that's a, that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> the presence of God changes everything. It changes the atmosphere um, of our lives and our homes. Are you under pressure this morning? Are you anxious? Are you stressed? Worship your way through. Worship is a posture of heart that says, I choose God. I choose to lift him up. In the Old Testament, there's many stories where they would send the worshippers out first, ahead of the battle. The worshippers would be the first ones to go singing and playing lots of instruments. I want to tell you this morning, we might not be at a physical war, but we are in a spiritual war. Worship is a powerful weapon. This is why the enemy wants to distract us. This is why you're sat here on a Sunday morning sometimes and some of you are thinking, okay, so. Hallelujah, God reigns. Hallelujah. Oh, have I done my thing with like, my boss at work? Because I know he sent me that email. Sunday, send that email, and then after that, oh, that's when you were laughing. 
Because it is true. <laughs> and I know it's true. Can I do it? We're distracted. We're distracted in our worship time. Some of you were looking at me like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's true, because it's easy. It's easy for our minds to wonder because the enemy wants to distract us because he knows the power of his coming and setting aside time and realigning our spirits with what God is. You know, how much, and this is, you know, this is a training thing. This is like, we, you know, we need to train our minds that when we come in, we have the, the, the heart and the posture of worship, so we know that you're gonna, that you're gonna try and be distracted. There's gonna be many things. We come in, our minds are running crazy, but we come into church and we set aside, Lord, we set aside, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you, yes, hallelujah, I God praise. Thank you that you're for me, that you're for me, that you're not against me, Lord, thank you. That you have plans to prosper me, to harm me. Lord, we focus on you, we lift you high. As you start to declare his goodness, the worries of the weak and the worries and stresses of all the stuff you're carrying on your shoulders starts to, starts to disappear behind you. God doesn't want us just to stay in our moment, in our times of worship, just thinking about the roast potatoes, as awesome as they're going to be at 2 p.m. And I know, you know, some of those, <laughs> the roast potatoes are also very important, can I just add? But not as important um, as, as, as worship. Worship changes the atmosphere. It changes the atmosphere. I remember being younger, and I grew up in a Christian family. My mum my, my and my dad are pastors. And uh, there was a time in the, like every morning, I'm one of four, when my brothers and sisters, we were just, we were just causing chaos. Like, I mean, you can only imagine, like, oh, mom, where's my socks? Like, where's my shoes? Where's your... And apparently this went on for weeks and weeks. So it's like every morning, just this spirit of kind of like, Oh, where's the innocent? Yeah, and it's cr- like we're fighting. Like I'm punching my brother. Like everything's just chaos in our house. And I can't find. Where's my PE kit? Why haven't you told me you have PE? What's wrong with you? And mum shouting everything. And it's just chaos in the house. You know. And uh, for those of you that that that, that don't, I mentioned at the start that um, my mum like is from like Jamaica. Like there was no messing in our ho- in our house. Like there was none of this like, Joe, I'm going to count, I'm going to count to 30. And if you don't get here, but one, two, there was, there was none of those games in my house. My mum just would just give me one look. And I knew it was a write off it was just game over. <laughs> Uh, I tell you this one story. I, did, I, I just remember being young, and me, and my, me, and my brother in the shop. My mom was doing the shopping on the trolley. We thought it was funny just to start like, I don't know, messing around and stuff, like chucking stuff around, and whatever chaos. And my mum, it got to the point that my mum. Um, <laughs> some of you are gonna be like, I can't believe, it. but she used to carry like a wooden spoon with her. <laughs> my mum was old school. I had like a wooden spoon in the bag. I'm telling you, man. She would just do one thing. She'd just do this. In a handbag, you know, wreck rolling in a handbag. <laughs> She'd just do this. Joseph! <laughs> fear. Fear with Griffin. But what she decided to do was in the morning, she decided to put on worship. She decided to change the atmosphere. So in the mornings before school, worship. We used to wake up loud in the house. Loud. Turn it off, mom. Like, what are you doing? You're crazy. Like, when peace like a river. Seven, eight. You know what I mean? As a kid, you're like, what is going on? But what was she doing? She was changing the atmosphere. She was changing the atmosphere. She was, she was changing what we were waking up to. Complaining negativity, fighting, bickering. She was changing the atmosphere. God is looking for worshippers that will change the atmosphere. Will you worship him in the middle of this morning before you get your dream job? Before your life partner arrives? Before you get your promotion? Will you worship him in the middle? 
Praise and worship provides a hiding place. Maybe that's why David writes, as the deer pants for living water, so my soul thirsts for you. A deer only pants because it can't sweat. The only reason it would sweat is being chased by an enemy. It's on the run. And I'm not sure if you knew this, but if a deer can get to water, it can be hidden from his enemies because he's sent it. your soul this morning long for living waters, still waters, because mine does. And my invitation for you this morning is that God wants to embrace you. He wants to embrace your worship. He wants you to take on his yoke, which is easy, and his burden, which is light. There is an invitation, there's an invitation to be reminded this morning to enter his gates with thanksgiving. Just as you are, without your mask, without your great performance, just with holy hands, saying, God, I don't have this, but you do. I worship you in every season, in a mountain and in a valley. I sang a hymn this morning, some of you may know it. It is well with my soul. And for some of you might know the story, and some of you may not. But the person who wrote that is Horatio Gates Spafford. And he was a successful Chicago lawyer with every reason to be thankful and faithful to God, a supporter of preachers like Dwight L. Moody and Ira Sankey. In 1871, his four-year-old son died. While struggling with this personal chariot, with this personal tra tragedy, the great Chicago fire of the same year reduced the family's property, investments, and financial security to ashes. What remained was seriously devalued in the financial downturn that followed. To give the family time and space to recover, Horatari made plans for him, his wife, four daughters to join and encourage Moody and Sankey with the preachers as one of their European preaching tours. Boarding the SS Bill to have her in November 1873, a business emergency forced Horatari to remain in Chicago, but the family went ahead. In mid-Atlantic, the Ville de Havre had collided with another ship, the Lockburn sank in 12 minutes with the loss of 226 and 307 passengers and crew. Several days later, Horatari Spafford received a telegram from his wife, Anna. I didn't want a picture of it. She says, save the mother. All four of their daughters, Annie, Maggie, Bessie, and baby Tinetta, were torn from her torn from her mother's arms by force of water and were lost. Horatori immediately set off for Wales to bring his wife home. On the crossing to Wales, the ship's captain summoned Horatori to the bridge, informing him that a careful reckoning has been made and I believe we are now passing through the place where the ship was wrecked. Horatori returned to his cabin that night wrote these words, which became the hymn, It is well with my soul, to which Arthur Bliss later had added his familiar melody. Horatorio recorded that he passed over the spot where, 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 where she went down in mid-ocean, the water three miles deep. But I do not think of our dear ones there. They are safe, folded. In her grief and 
despair for the survivors feared that Anna, his wife, might take her own life. Later she spoke of hearing she later she spoke of hearing a voice say, You were saved for a purpose, and remembered that a friend once said, It's easy to be grateful and good when you have so much. But take care that you are not a fair weather friend to God. It's easy to be grateful and good when you have so much, but take care that you are not a fair weather friend to God. Horatorio and Anna returned to Chicago in 1876. They had a son, and in 1878, a daughter. His son died from scarlet fever, again only age before. In 1880, they had another daughter who they named Grace. But take care that you are not a fair weather friend to God. When peace, like a river, Sorrows like sea billows roar. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. Lord, this morning we want to just come and bring our hearts to you. We want to come as we are. Just let it all go into your presence right now. I pray that we will become worshippers in that which you are seeking. That of spirit and of truth. Pray that you would give us faith and not be fair weather friend, a fair weather friend to you, God, but worship you in the mountain when things are good, when life is great. But worship you in the valley when things are hard and I don't have the answers. And I have family problems. In the, di in the midst of a difficult marriage, when things aren't easy at work. Lord, make us a people that say it is well with my soul. In great loss, great pain. Let our souls say it is well, it is well with my soul. Holy Spirit, come this morning. Thank you for my brothers, my sisters. Right now, I pray for your Holy Spirit just to dwell on them, even in this moment. Come and transform us. Come and release your power, your presence, right now. We're coming back to the start where it all began and where it's all about you. It's all about you. We worship you this morning. We lift you high. Adonai, Messiah, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, there is none like you. Yahweh, our great provider. Some trust in horses and chariots, but I trust in the name of the Lord. We lift you high this morning. Because I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Cause I'm 
you're here this morning and you feel like you're far away from God. You feel like you're, you're not right with God. You're, you're living apart from Him. There's an invitation here for you this morning. But it's not by accident you're here. God is seeking you out this morning. Um, so please come and find me. I'm just in front here at the end. Come and find me. Thank you. 